There we go. All righty. Awesome. Awesome. How is everybody doing? Let's uh, let's dive into it. Happy Tuesday. Uh, where is? There we go. All right. Cool. Cool. Yep. Happy Tuesday. It is. I didn't do much trading last week, but um, I'll kind of go through some of the stuff that I'm uh, I'm looking at now. I actually have some pretty good setups uh, that I'm personally looking at. And um, my November, you know, this is actually, yeah, I mean, last week was the first week of December. Um, my November was actually pretty, pretty nice. Um, I was, I was happy with uh, ultimately the profits that we took out of it and uh, just kind of looking to finish out the year uh, with a decent, uh, with a, pre a decent profit target. Um, I could tell you, you know, I've talked about it over and over again, you know, you want to go back and you want to always you know, consult your journal, re review your journal. I always take the last week of the year. Um, I don't trade the last week. I, um, not that there's not opportunities, it's just one, you know, I've got a lot of other family stuff to do, but two, I like to really spend the time and close out my 2021 books, um, get my 2022 um, journals and books ready to go for the new year. Uh, and also I like to you know, always look for things that I can change in my trading. So we got here. Uh, you're labeling? Yeah, yeah, we'll get to it, bro. Let's see what you got here, Chad. <sighs> On S&P. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a distro. I mean, the only thing that sucks is the time of day. But yeah, you've you've got um, you've got the only the only thing I would change is this. So your major sign of weakness. Wait for this BOS. That would be your major sign of weakness. Because your major sign of weakness happens after your UTAD. So, and just looking at this price action, this looks like a type one. And I'd, I'd, I'd be interested to see, I mean, you could see one, two, three, four drives. We'll, we'll look at SP. Yeah, we'll look at SPX. Um, this, this, this honestly looks like it just a, a, a reaccumulation to me, but uh, we'll take a look at it. Yeah, 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 we'll take a look at it. All right, cool. Um, so diving into it, <clears throat> sorry. Diving into it really on the news calendar. Uh, there's, there's not much in the way of a, a tremendous amount of uh, news that's going to move the market, except for essentially um, the, uh, the rate statement, which is your FOMC for the Canadian dollar. Um, that's really the only thing that's going to be moving anything of, of sorts. Um, I'm pretty, um, for, for this week and next week, I'm really isolating a lot of U.S. dollar crosses. I'm looking at the majors. Um, I'm looking at Canadian pairs as well, specifically CAD JPY and CAD Chef. Um, but that's that's really what I'm looking at. And then uh, I do have some Kiwi in Australian pairs that I'm really looking at. Uh, my NZD CAD cell is uh, in some pretty pretty nice profits, so I'm pretty happy with that. But as far as this week's news. Fundamentally, this is the only thing really that's going to be moving the market. Um, you know, I, I don't know what's going to happen with, uh, with the euro when this guy speaks. Um, not, uh, I, I don't imagine it's going to be too much. Um, you know, I think it's just a, a normal press conference that he's having. And then, of course, CPI data on Friday is going to move some indices, but that's it indices, some metals, uh, 10 year treasury notes, stuff like that. Um, and then, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. You know, we've got tomorrow is going to be crude oil inventories. So that's going to move oil. Um, oil is definitely what on earth. Oh, okay. I was like, man, <laughs> that's a lot of stuff on a chart. Um, yeah. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. I always like to read through some of this stuff, like the editor picks and stuff. Uh, 
Uh, speaking of crypto, hopefully you guys jumped in. Uh, if you guys were on the last couple of sessions, uh, I definitely, I definitely, definitely said to keep an eye on, uh, keep an eye on crypto. I said that it was going to be a quick drop. I'm not entirely sure if this is it. And you know, we'll start with crypto real quick. I wasn't, I'm not entirely sure if this was the main drop. Um, I think we may get one more, but just in the in the in the case that we don't, you always want a cost dollar average in. And if you guys remember, I said that I was looking for us to come into the 42,000 mark. And sure enough, I mean, we came into 41,690. So we we saw it pretty nicely. Um you know, hopefully, if you guys were looking to invest in Bitcoin, you did cost dollar average in around the 42, 43,000 mark, because you'd, you'd be up a pretty good penny right now on it. Um, and then, of course, like I said, I mean, the, the 30,000, 32,000 is still on the table. So I don't, uh, you know, if, if you ever want to get a good comical, uh, if you want to get a good laugh, just read some of like the business reports on crypto. I mean, they're talking about because we, because we were unable to stay above the 60,000 mark that it's entering a bear market. But for those of you guys that know what you're doing, I mean, just follow your market cycle. I mean, we had a distribution, you would expect price to redistribute and we need to come back into demand, right? Demand is here, demand is here. So, you know, yeah. Can, can I send you a chart of mine with my trade plan for BTC? Uh, can you send me your chart? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just post, post the, post the trading view link. Well, I'll, I'll give it a, I'll give it a look here. Um, so anyway, the, uh, the heck, uh, Reggie, you kind of pissed me off, but we'll see. We'll see what happens later. Uh, anyway, so Bitcoin, really good move. Um, you know, hopefully you guys, I mean, it was across the board, ADA, um, you know, ADA came right into the buy area I was looking at. Um, again, I'm not convinced that we're, we're still not susceptible for one more push down. Um, we're still early in December, uh, but I am looking, you know, Chainlink was one that I, I was able to get into. So Chainlink came right into the buy area I was looking at. Uh, didn't pop my $15 entry, but did get my $17 entry. So you know, this was, this was a nice little pop that I got in here out of this. Uh, but yeah, crypto across the board kind of did what I was expecting. Um, I, I saw, I, I screenshot it cause I had a couple, a couple chats that I'm in where people were like, how, how did nobody, you know, why didn't anybody tell me that this was going to happen? I'm like, dude, what are you talking about, man? It's, it's just look at the chart. You know, this, this Bitcoin chart is massively bullish. There's, there's this, this drop right here doesn't indicate anything but strength for me, especially the way that we reacted out of demand and saw this nice little push. So it was, I mean, all in all, I mean, we've seen almost a $10,000 push on it. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so going forward, I mean, now it's just a matter of, we, we need to see price, in my opinion, I wanna see price at least get above this redistribution. We get above that redistribution, you know, any pullbacks would be an opportunity to get more, uh, some more, pos you know, positions or investments into it. And, you know, we'd be looking to take this higher. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect anything to happen over the next couple of days, though. Um, if you look at every movement that we've gotten on Bitcoin, um, you know, look, look back at this drop, look back at this drop. Um, you know, obviously this was just a long accumulation, but overall, when you look at how long these things took from the initial drop to where we broke it, you know, was 10 days, the initial, we'll talk about this one here, the initial drop to where we broke it was 14 days, you know, so you're, you're, you're going to be looking probably a week, two weeks, um, you know, and if you look at last year, right around the Christmas week is actually where we saw the, the biggest pushes um, in the market. Um, you know, so just, just keep that in mind. I, I'll never forget. I mean, that's where I bought, I bought on, on Christmas Eve, I bought Ethereum at $558. So, and then it just never came back from there. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. I'm, you know, I'm personally not, not liquidating any of my, uh, my assets I have in crypto. 
Uh, one, of, one of the guys I follow on YouTube was talking about how he liquidated all of his assets because he, he sees a, a huge push to the downside. Bitcoin could possibly come down to 10,000. You know, I'll be honest, if Bitcoin goes down to 10,000, that's it. I think crypto is going to just going to falter. I don't, I don't, I don't see a reason for Bitcoin to come down to 10,000 at this point and, and survive what's going to happen to it. So, but anyway, um, moving on, let's, let's dive into essentially, I guess what I'm looking at, right? Um, no, no change on Chef JPY. We've just been here for two whole weeks. Um, you know, I will, I will say this, you know, absent a significant drop into my buy area, really the, the next thing I need to see is I just need to see some bullish momentum. And right now we're not, you know, right now this is all just sideways action, um, you know, potentially a redistribution in the making, you know, but if we do get some bullish momentum, that's where I'll start looking for buys. So it's just one of those, honestly, Chef JPY for me is just going to be a, a hold it, you know, I mean, I, I am still holding from way the heck down here. Um, there's nothing really that I want to do with it at this point, other than just let it, let it tell me what it, you know, let it give me the indicators to get into the, uh, into the trade. All right. Um, update on Euro GBP. So for those that I'm still holding both this position and this position, um, I did miss the hedge buy out of here and it was pretty unfortunate. Um, I know a bunch of you guys did catch it. So good job with it. Um, it just never gave me a second, second entry that I wanted to get into. So for me, the hedge is dead. Um, and you can see what we got going on here. Now we, we are in a, in a valid distribution. So it has created a type one. Um, we do have, we do have our climax, our test, our test, um, our test, and then our UTAD. All right. Um, if only it wasn't on tone, yeah. Uh, and, and we have broken, right? We have broken. So what I wanna see now is I'm gonna be waiting specifically in here. Um, I'm gonna be waiting for a lower time frame distribution to really refine my entry to take this sucker down, you know? So this is, for me, we're, we're in the right area. You know, I, I had spoken about it for a couple of weeks. I wanted to see us come back and trade into this right here. You know, you have supply sitting in the redistribution. You have supply sitting in the distro up here. Um, and we tapped right into it. So we tapped nicely into it. Now it's just a matter of being patient. I would say that maybe not tomorrow, but definitely Thursday, um, I would be expecting price action in here. All right. Um, I can imagine, you know, I can pretty much imagine us trading during Asian. Maybe we do something like this. During Frankfurt, New York gets a pull down. Maybe it walks one more more leg up, and then this is where we're going to start our distribution. Um, I would imagine that maybe uh, I would probably say maybe tomorrow night Asian session is where we're going to start building the distribution. Um, that'd be that'd be the best case scenario. Maybe get the UTAD during London, you know, the break, and then a New York entry to take this sucker down. That's that's ultimately a perfect scenario for me is what I'd be looking at. All right. Um, <clears throat> but I'm, I'm definitely going to be looking for, for the shorts, uh, specifically out of here. Um, you know, there is a micro distro in there. Obviously I'm not looking at the, at that because that is changeover, but there is a micro distro in here. Um, we just, I, I don't think we're going to, I mean, we may get all the way up there, but realistically, this is the, this right here is what we need to mitigate. So as price goes in there and shows me a distribution, I'm going to pull the trigger and take the cells on it, you know, and I'll do just like I've been doing with your GBP. I will, you know, just take it to a new low, you know, um, you know, this cell that we got up here, took it to a new low, this cell we got here, took it to a new low. So, you know, going to be targeting this new low down here. Uh, which will give us a really nice R to R. All right. So that's what I'm going to be anticipating with your GBP. Um, you know, for, for me, the, uh, you know, supply is still in control. You know, like if you, if you, you know, just take a step back, take a look, 
get up to uh, heck we'll even go to like a two hour i really don't go on two hours too many times but look at the two hour and this chart still doesn't show any signs of buying you know every accumulation every accumulation except for this one has failed so i'm pretty convinced that that one's going to fail as well especially the fact that we're distributing without taking out the high so I'm going to be, I'm going to be looking for the cells on it. All right. Um, EU. So I don't know if anybody actually wasn't able to check a lot of the chats today, but EU gave a really nice entry this morning. Um, you know, same thing. I'm, I'm still holding my EU cells. Um, you know, this one here is sitting at a one to 230. Well, was at a one to 233. Um, nothing about this has deterred me from looking for shorts. So um, the, you know, if you want something to back test, definitely back test London's price action. Uh, really, really clean entry. Uh, hold on. Let's see. There we go. Really clean entry uh, right out of that test. You know, you had a really nice distro. You had that Frankfurt sweep. You had the break mitigation it gave a really nice entry um lined up pretty easy or pretty nicely with dxy as well in the same area i think we were looking at it this this morning and dxy gave i think this came into the 50 percent. so if you like i said when you back test it just you'll see this this actually came into this came into the 50 percent, and you jump over to dxy dxy came into the 80 so where is it there you go yeah, DXY came into the eighty percent. So the DXY entry would have been definitely nicer if you could if you have a broker that gives you a decent uh, um, a decent spread on it. Uh, but with DXY, I mean, just look at you know zoom out a little bit and just take a look at this chart. This chart's massively bullish. You know, we we haven't shown any weakness. All we did was come right back into demand, and now we're just walking this up. So my anticipation is that we're going to continue to do this with DXY. Uh, with that, I'm going to be looking for those shorts on EU. All right. Um, and I was looking this morning. Um, this is just something I was I was kind of looking at to happen this morning during New York session. Um, if uh, if it comes in during Frankfurt or London, I mean, it's something I'll, I'll contemplate taking. But you know, for me, this last area right here needs to be mitigated. Um, it was the eight minute candle that I was looking at. And, you know, more importantly, what we did from it was, yeah, there we go. More importantly, what we did from it is we traded below the news candle. So we traded below that news candle. Um, again, you can just see us doing this, just walking this down. So I'd be, I'd be looking for price action in here. You know, especially, if, you know, for me, it's got to be the right session time. It's got to be at minimum the Frankfurt Open into New York. So that's what I'll be looking at. Yeah, yeah it was it was pretty nice. Um, I mean, I think it gave, uh, well, shoot, just just to just to this low here was a little over a one to 12. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really, really clean price action out of it. And, you know, like I said, just keep in mind that you are you're just seeing evidence of supply coming into the market, you know, multiple, 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 multiple reasons to keep looking for sales. So I'm going to keep looking for sales. Uh, structure is bearish, order flow is bearish. So I've got to play out of, um, I've got to play out of order flow, um, you know, because we're, we're nowhere near structure points, you know, structure is way the heck up there. Um, and if I do get into the cell out of this sometime uh, during London into New York, you know, my overall target, all of my EU shorts are coming here. All of my EU shorts are coming there. Uh, you're looking for those cells at uh, 0.288, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I won't have a limit on it until I wake up. Um, I won't put a limit on it until we wake up. But, and, and the limit's going to be just a really, really low risk limit. 
um, I'm going to be more interested in playing a distribution if we get it. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So that's that's EU. Um, GU. So GU. I am. I'm actually still holding. I'm still holding the cells from up here. Um, and what I was looking at for GU this morning, you know, the the key I wanted to identify. I want to identify our NFP candle. NFP came in really good mitigation out of prior distribution over here, really good supply point. And what I wanted to see was I wanted to see, we can kind of, we'll backtrack it for a second. So this is what I wanted to see. We, we broke, um, you know, we broke this low. So what I'm looking at is we've got distribution and we've got a redistro. So these are my two points that I was looking at. Um, wicked you out by 1.1 pips where were you looking for the cell yeah where were you looking for the cell anyway um yeah this this was a really clean entry you could see the distro beautiful 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 distro um I actually got in off the 50%. Uh, when we broke this low, I went to break even, <clears throat> paid myself just what I risked on the trade, ended up coming back at the end of the day and breaking me even. So it is what it is. Um, I did, let's see what you got, bro. Um, So you took it out of here. <clears throat> this was this morning. This was this morning. Let's take a look. Hold on. Yeah. I guess the question is, well, I mean, there's not much I'm going to say about it. I, I can tell you why I wouldn't have taken it because you, you've got Asian, you've got Asian price action intact, but yeah. Yeah. For me, EU would have been the play, not GU. E, EU swept the Asian highs. Yeah. What's, what's your, what's your, I guess the two questions is what's your profit ratio or margin? when trading, when taking out of Asian price action and what's your winning percentage? I mean, if it's a good winning percentage and a great profit margin, then keep doing it. But I would just, if you don't know what that answer is, I would definitely go back and look at all your trades that you've taken and quantify that. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, just for me, I wouldn't have taken anything out of it because we, it's, it's a type two schematic, you know, and that's the other thing. Quantify your type twos. You know, when you're playing out of type twos, what's, I mean, there's a reason why in my journal, I think I'm now up to like 68, 68% profit on type ones for the year. And I, on type one, well, on type one accumulations. And then on type one, on type two accumulations, I think I'm like 4.6%. So I don't even bother with type twos unless, unless it comes into a really good structure point. Yeah. But you didn't set the limit. Oh, well that sucks, bro. Yeah. yeah that sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is what it is. No biggie. So anyway, we, we, we had a really good reaction from it. Uh, but then we get this typical end of New York crap. So, um, my, my personal, my, my personal opinion that we're going to be going into is up here. We're going to be coming up to this. So that's, that's where I'll be waiting. You know, I mean, if, if for some chance we start just to go sideways here, 
and we build the distribution, great. I just don't think there's enough time. I mean, we're talking about, we need at least, yeah, we're gonna need at least like seven hours. So yeah, I, I'm not even gonna worry about it. I'll, I'll, in the morning when I wake up, I'll take a look at GU, see where it's at so I can try to find an entry. I can tell you this, without a doubt, I'm looking for sales. Um, ideally, this is going to be the most, this is going to be the area I want to get into, um, this area right here. That's where I want to get into the cell. So I'll be looking, hopefully we can just keep walking this thing up, come in here, give me a distribution so I can walk it down. Um, but again, just keep in mind, this is order flow, right? We're, we're talking, we're on a one minute chart in a very discounted area. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, just look at what, GU has been doing, you know, when you look at this chart, there's absolutely zero, zero evidence of strength. So I'm going to continue to short this. <coughs> You've noticed better when percent, yeah, when you're trading over New York. Yep, exactly, man. Exactly. Why do you think I don't wake up for London, man? Everybody used to always give me grief. Now, why don't you wake up for London? Because uh, I, I, I don't need to. I get, I get plenty of entries out of, out of New York. So LPSY entry and LPSY entry out of what? What are you getting your LPSY entry out of though? I mean, you could, you could try it. I'm, I'm personally not going to be taking a limit order out of there because we, we could come up to this. We can, you know, what's, what's keeping, I guess, I guess if you put your stop loss up here. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. But this to me right here doesn't, uh, doesn't give me a really good area of confluence to take a trade out of because we could most definitely come up into that higher push. So that's that's why for me I'm gonna be I'm just gonna be sitting waiting for the distro. I'm gonna be sitting where's she at? Yeah, I'll be sitting waiting for a distro in the box. Yeah. Yep. Uh well, I got you, bro. I got you. Where would you say lower time, bro, Wes? Lower time frame, man. Geez, lower time frames way the hell up here, man. Way, way, way right up there. This, this is the distro that's controlling that that is maintaining lower time frame structure. Yeah. This is all that's. I mean, we're what are we? Six hundred pips. Six hundred pips from lower time frame structure. So we've just been. This thing's just been selling off which is good, you know, which is good. Uh, but yeah, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be waiting. I'm going to be waiting right up here. I'm pretty, I'm pretty convinced that we're going to trade above. I'm pretty convinced we're going to trade above this distribution here. So like I said, there's not enough time. I mean, I, I do like the compression on it, but you know, nothing about this is telling me you know, short it, short it, short it yet. So we'll wait, you know, ideally I want to see this right up here. And if that happens, that's where I'm going to pull the trigger on it. All right. So, but like I said, the easy answer for me is this, actually, let me, let me move that up there, cross in ourselves. The easy answer for me is I know, I know I'm only looking for one side on this. I'm only looking for cells, you know, so, so you're shooting out of, I'm not shooting at a lower time frame structure. No, no, man. Lower time frame SC? No, I'm not. I'm not shooting at a lower time frame SC either. This is all order flow. Yeah, this is all order flow. Lower time frame SC is going to be, geez. Lower time frame SC is going to be right here, man. That's your that's your lower time frame SC. Yeah, we're we're way down here. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. So EU GU shorts looking all day long. Um, yeah, and N NZD CAD. NZD CAD is sitting. What is NZD CAD sitting at? Listen, I feel it. It sucks, especially for those of you guys that got stopped out at uh, at changeover. It's sitting at a one to one, one hundred and twenty two right now. Um, and I'm holding, I'm still holding two, two orders on it, two full volume orders. Um, I don't, I don't see this happening this week. You could see the redistribution. 
we are, what are we right now? We are 130 pips from the first area that I'm going to be looking for a sell. So I'll, I'll be, I'll be looking to see what we do out of this news candle right here. Um, that's going to be the, the only, that's going to be the first place that I will even contemplate looking for a sell on NZD CAD. Um, I'll tell you right now though, I, I won't be disappointed if I wake up in the morning and NZD CAD falls another hundred pips. I'll be, I'll be pretty happy with it. Um, you know, when we look at, when we look at what, um, what NZD CAD has done actually for our, you know, we have finally, um, we have finally confirmed the, actually, let me change it. We have finally confirmed this as a redistribution. All right, we've broken the low and we've broken intraday structure. So just look at it from a market cycle, <clears throat> get your distro, get your redistro. Um, I'm expecting continuation, right? I'm expecting continuation. I'm expecting us to now get down into at minimum, you know, potentially something like down in this area here, right? Um, so we're talking another 400 pips before even contemplating um, looking for some kind of buys or, or bounce out of NZD CAD. All right. Um, so the, the, the play out of here two weeks ago was super, super clean. Um, and unfortunately, it just, it, for me, it just never gave another re-entry. You know, the, the only possible entries were out of this bad boy here. And then after that, we just collapsed, never gave anything else. You can see the, the clean distro here, um, but we just never came back to mitigate it. So because we never came back to mitigate, there was just no entry. Um, but I will be looking, yeah, I will be looking out of, like I said, this candle right here. I'll be looking out of this wick right there. That's where I'm going to be looking. That's the first area that I will give it a, a go if we can trade up there. Um, but I'll be honest with, with oil uh, and we'll get to oil, but with oils anticipated bullish push, I don't see enough. I don't see enough strength out of just the Kiwi to get us up there. I think we're just going to keep collapsing. All right. Um, and then the last one I'll go through is, um, silver, you know, I mean, silver is, you know, I'm still holding silver from way up here back. Uh, what was it? Three weeks ago now, um, silver, I mean, it's not in any huge profits. It's only, uh, like a one to 60. Um, and you can kind of see market cycle, right? We just distro, redistro, redistro. We're starting to see an accumulation here. Um, I'm personally waiting for this to just turn into a redistribution. All right. I'm not, I'm not interested in trying to buy it. Um, personally, what I'm going to be doing is this, what, whatever we do, like, let's just say that hypothetically we do this and we break confirming the redistribution, right? So we confirm redistribution. Well, I'm going to be playing now out of our shakeout, right? That's, that's what I'm going to be doing. So for me, it's just, you can see, I got my alert down here. I'm just waiting, just waiting for the redistro. Um, you know, I, I, I see the accumulation. I just have no reason to buy the accumulation. So we're, we're bearish. Um, you know, when we look at where this is accumulating for me, gives me, gives me nothing really that I want to play out of because when we look at, when we look at, just from a market cycle perspective, you know, you can see your accumulation, your reaccumulation, your distro. Um, it makes sense that we continue to with that bullish structure and just make a new low. So that's that's what I'll be waiting for on silver. Um, yeah, what do you th what do I think of gold? <sighs> Nothing. It's not even on my list. That's that's what I think of gold. It's it's a bunch of there you go. If somebody, if somebody would love to tell me what, what we're doing here, I'm, I'm, I'd gladly listen if someone can let me know. But the way, the way I see it, um, you know, you've got a distro that didn't do anything. You've got a redistro. You got 
looks like just a bunch of profit taking taken here. You've got supply here. You've got an accumulation here, a reaccumulation here that came into a distro into supply, and now we're here. So, I, I, you know, I can I can probably spend an entire week trying to break down gold and figure out what it's truly doing. Uh, but I mean, I could tell you this: at some point, I'm still bearish. So I'm still bearish on it. Um, you know, I just, there's nowhere I want to sell from, you know, um, I mean, there's, yeah, there's, there's no place I want to sell from at this point. So we, you know, for me, nothing has changed. I'm still anticipating us getting into the 1500s, uh, eventually just much like I am with silver, but yeah, from, from this perspective here, there's absolutely nothing I want to do with, uh, with gold, I'd rather just keep trading silver. So, I mean, you're looking at it, look at it on this chart and this thing is just a, a bunch of mess. It's, it's, it's slop. So yeah, good luck to whoever's trading it. Um, time since inception, 30 days, six hours. Yeah, yeah, you'll get a, just email. If, if you don't get an email within 24, 48 hours, just email them. And, uh, and just, yeah, they'll, they'll review it as long as, uh, as long as you, you only need $1 profit and then you'll get a free redo. So yeah. 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 As long as you're $1 in profit, you're good. Yep. You got it, bro. Yep. Yeah. I would, I would, um, uh, when did it close? It, Mahi, it, it closed today or it, it finished today. yesterday um okay so if you don't hear i'll tell you what by tomorrow if you don't get an email from them just email them just just log into your thing and just email them and and you'll get you'll get uh, the new credentials okay all right cool cool um i sound tired yeah, yeah so for most of you guys don't know i was i was in the hospital for like five days so yeah <laughs> i'm very uh i'm very weak that's why i didn't trade last week um yeah, I was admitted to the hospital. I had to go through a bunch of surgery and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm kind of recovering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm a whole lot better now. Um, you prefer silver as well? Uh, you're long from 2220 on silver. You're long from 2220 on silver. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess what, what's what's the bias like why why are you long on it i mean for me for me we broke we definitely broke intraday structure here and we distributed from prior supply so yeah you took the spring yeah i mean it really doesn't matter. I mean, you're at break even. So, you know, if it, if it plays out great, um, I would just be very cognizant of where you are in the structure point, you know? So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, this, the, the price actions telling me that this is going to end up this is going to end up redistributing, especially especially with if if we're seeing if we're going to see the dollar go on another run, this is this is going to take another tank. But like I said, I mean you're you're at break even, so let it be, let it run. You know, um, yeah. Um, we haven't made a new high since the test, so much. yeah, yeah. I mean we're just kind of lingering. You know, we're kind of just lingering in here. Um, I mean, I, I still, I still imagine you're, you're going to, so if you got to take profit up here, you know, for some partials, I mean, it'll pop. If, if anything, we're going to play into this, you know, specifically this, I mean, that's, that's where I think we're going to get into. I think you'll probably see, uh, you'll probably see price come in here. This is where you're going to see the distro, you know, there's your create or there's your ice. And then this is your confirmation of redistro. 
So yeah, just, just for me, it's, it's not, you know, yeah, it's, it's not worth it. I mean, you know, you're in from 2220 for the buy I'm in from 20, what is it? 2516. Yeah. I'm in from 2516 on the sell. So, you know, and I'm, I'm, I've taken two partials. I'm going to continue to hold though. Yeah. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, moving on. So like I said, I'm bearish Kiwi, I'm bearish Australian dollar. And, you know, I've been talking about ACAD for a while. Um, I am, you know, looking for the continuations on these. You know, we've been, we've been pretty lucky in just seeing, obviously this takes a long, the ACAD has been taking a long time. The, the last sell I got into, um, I mean, it took an entire month to just break the low. Um, we, ne I never got a re-entry out of the area I was looking at, but it did come into the point of interest I wanted to see. Um, and now what I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to be looking for us pretty much the same thing. I want to see what we do when we get around. I want to see what we do when we get around this news candle, right? But more importantly, um, and you can kind of see, I wanted to see a distribution here, right? Out of this shakeout. We didn't really get that high, but we did distribute, okay? So for me, the two areas that I'm really gonna kind of be paying attention to out of order flow are gonna be these two manipulated moves, right? I'm gonna be looking at this. I'm gonna be looking at this candle right here, and I'm gonna be looking at that wick right there. Those are gonna be the two points that I, I'm gonna focus on short-term. You know, obviously, if ACAD can rally, <clears throat> if ACAD can rally and get into some uh, more premium areas, oh, for sure, that's that's where I want to, that's where I want to, you know, trade from. I'd rather sell from a premium area than a discount. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, and you can kind of see we're just lollygagging around here. You know, um, what I do, what I do want to focus on though is you know understanding that if if we can get up higher great but i i don't foresee us doing that and you know structure wise same thing like nzd cad this distribution right here right is what's maintaining the entire leg right so you've got you know well here hold on let me mark it out so you've got nothing but Redistros after redistros after redistros, right? So this is why for me, this is why these are the first two areas that I'm going to be paying attention to, right? Um, I mean, yeah, there you're at already, you know, and, and of course for me on order flow plays, I, I risk less. So, um, but you're already at discounted pricing. So I hate selling from discounted pricing, but as you can see, ACAT hasn't given us a choice. You know, in over a month, we we haven't truly had any decent pullbacks. This was this was the last area that I was looking at. You know, and it it sucks that it fell just short of where I wanted to sell from. You know, but ultimately it gave us it gave us exactly what I wanted to see. All right, <clears throat> so I'm looking for those ACAD shorts, much like NZD CAD shorts. Um, I'm also looking uh, for AU. Actually, no, AU, I really don't care about right now. So AU, I was really, really interested to see if we were going to break this intraday low, and we haven't. So for me, AU is going to be on the back burner. Um, I'm, not really, I'm not really interested in doing anything with AU at this point. Um, now, CAD Chef is a different story, though, right? CAD Chef, we have some really, really nice price action, right? we got a really nice distro. Hold on. We got a really nice distro into a super clean redistribution. All right, so we got a super clean redistribution here and you can see the distribution that occurs here, right? We essentially distribute, mitigate out of the distribution, make that low. So this is where I want to play out of. All right. 
Um, if we can get price to come back into, you know, like the 73,800 to like 7,400 area, this is what I want us to mitigate, you know, and that's where I'll be waiting. Um, you know, go back, you could take a look. The, there she is right there. We had a, we had a lower time frame distribution that occurred. The only thing that sucks is that distribution occurred during changeover. So the price action is going to be very skewed. Um, but ultimately, anything, anything from here up is where I'm going to be looking for myself. All right. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. We had that distro here, missed our freaking limit order, um, never got the chance to get back into CAD Chef. Um, actually, to come to think of it, I honestly don't think, I don't think I've caught, I mean, I've been on CAD Chef for months. I don't think I've actually caught a trade on it. I think it's, I think it's eluded me the entire time. I think it has. So anyway, I'm, I, you know, I'm not interested in trying to buy it. I know, I know we've got an accumulation here, um, but realistically the accumulation hasn't done anything. What we have done is invalidated demand by taking out this reaccumulation here. Um, and like I said, I'll be looking for the cells out of here. We're, we're not very far. We're, I think, what, like 60 pips. So I'm going to continue to look for that distribution, specifically out of this shakeout, out of the redistro. All right. Yeah. Um, cool. Cool. So CAD Chef is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. All right. Um, now, there's going to be a little discrepancy, right? Because I'm looking for cells on CAD Chef, right? But I'm looking for buys on CAD J, right? And when we look at higher time frame, if we just look at structure, right? We can see a couple of things. We could see one that this distribution is what is controlling this leg. And all we did was come back and we have seen just nothing but distro, distro, distro. All right. Um, supply is clearly in control. All right. Now everything freaking goes off. Where was this freaking this morning, man? Um, all right, cool. Um, so we can see that supply is definitely in control, right? When we look at this chart, this chart right here is telling me sell orders, sell orders, sell orders, sell orders, right? It's not telling me a lot of buy orders are getting filled. Um, so CAD Chef for me, structure-wise is bearish from a supply and demand standpoint and cause and effect. We're seeing evidence of, you know, we're seeing evidence of this just continuing to want to short itself. Uh, when we jump over to CAD J, CAD J is a different tune, right? CAD J is bullish, right? You can see we have... There we go. You can see that we have, right, that we have broken tons of structure, that we have made a new intraday leg high. So for me, CAD, CAD J is very, very much bullish. Um, and what we have is when we look at what broke lower time frame structure? This reaccumulation is what broke that lower time frame structure. It's also, you know, essentially, it's also what is responsible for this leg that broke a new intraday high, right? So essentially, this is my slingshot. And what do we get in that slingshot? We get a super clean, I don't know if I got it marked out. No, I don't have it marked out but we have a super clean type one schematic, right? And when we compare it, when we compare it to CAD Chef, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when we compare it to CAD Chef, pretty much the same price action right? We could see pretty much the same price action. Um, the only difference though is for me, 
I'm expecting massive weakness in the Japanese yen where the Swiss franc is actually showing bullish structure on their future side. So for me, this accumulation is just a reason to get into this distribution, right? Um, if we look at it, you can see when, you, when you're paying attention to what's going on here, this is where supply is present, right? Um, so I'm going to be looking for buys on CAD J. You know, it's just going to take a while for it to come back down because we are at minimum, we are 140 pips from where I want to buy. All right. <clears throat> you can see the reaccumulation that's here, right? This is the 50% mark. Um, so I will be looking for it for some kind of price action in here first. And if we don't get it out of there, right? If we don't, if we don't get a potential entry specifically out of, what is that? Maybe like the 10, 11, uh, I think the 11 might be it. Yeah. If we don't get price action out of this 11 minute candle, right? Um, I'm going to be looking for us to come lower. Let me just let me mark it out so we got it. Here we go. Um, yeah. So if we don't get something out of this 11 minute candle, I can tell you that I will be playing something out of this low over here. So there's going to be two options, right? You can, you can definitely see your accumulation and you can see your reaccumulation. So, you know, could this have been the mitigation? It very much it easily could have, because if you measure that push here, this comes to 50%. So I'll be waiting either, you know, from like the 87, 850 area to the 87, 750 area, that 10 pip range, I'll be waiting here or I'll be waiting out of that reaccumulation. But those are gonna be, uh, ideally those are the two areas I'm gonna be looking for buys on CAD J. And where CAD J is at, you know, for me, it, it's targets are gonna be a new high, right? I mean, I'm gonna be looking to take this, the, you know, 470 pips to make a new high. Okay. Yeah. G GJ looked pretty much the same as well. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I do, I do like where it's at, right? I do like where it's at. I like the location makes sense. The schematic is clean. Um, so now all that needs to happen is, why is my alert way up here? Now what needs to happen is we just need to pull back. So let this thing pull back the 140 pips. And I'm going to start looking for my buys. Okay. Um, so that's CAD J. Um, I will tell you that CAD J is one of my, it's, it's up on my priority list. Just because we are bullish on every time frame, we are now bullish on order flow, right? Because we have broken and confirmed the schematic. Um, and now it's just a matter of let this puppy come down, give me an entry. All right. Um, so that's CAD J on GA, right on GA, um, man, it sucks because I was actually looking for a sell at a GA out of this price action up here. And it gave, it, it gave a really decent entry, but it happened during changeover and there was no way that you would have survived it on a sell. So there's your distro and it gave an entry, especially after the break came back into 80% and then just sold off for like 400 pips. Um, so now for me, it's look for the buys, right? That's, that's ideally what I'm doing. The, the first area that I'm, I'm kind of going to give it a, an attempt at is going to be out of this reaccumulation. So if we trade in here, um, and we start to see evidence of an accumulation, this is where I'm going to play. All right. Um, and if not, then, you know, obviously I want us to come lower, but uh, yeah, most, most definitely I want us to trade into this right here. Um, you can see we've just been, we've been on a tear, 
you know, you can see evidence of buying, break of order flow, new high, evidence of buying, break of order flow, new high, evidence of buying and continuation place. So for me, this right here is that order flow leg. Uh, yeah, New Year close. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Right at New Year close. New Year close and Sydney open is changeover. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Similar to EA. The only the only difference between why I don't like EA is uh, because EA is mixed between structure, but EN is massively bearish where GA and GN are at least bullish for me. So I'll stick to the pound cross, you know, EA, EA is not even on my primary list. Um, but yeah, I do like, I do like GA from here. Um, and then of course I'm looking for buys on GJ, right? Um, you know, we are, we are, here's, here's my lower time frame structure point, right? We are in the extreme. We have, uh, we are showing signs of an accumulation. Uh, did it confirm yet? Hold on, let's see. Hmm. I don't know about this yet. Actually, wait a minute. Hold on for a sec. Sorry, guys. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I know somebody. I know somebody that was trying to sell out of here. I'm sure you guys, you guys and I am, I'm sure know. But yeah, they were they were trying to sell this, and I don't know why they were selling it. But no worries. I just, I just saw an alert. All right. Um. I'll tell you what, man, on, on GJ, I'm, I'm not sure yet if it's, if it's ready to go yet. I still, I still see this as bearish. Yeah, I still see this as bearish. Let me see something for a second. Do we have room to go one more? Yeah, yeah we got room for one more. Yeah. Okay. So you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they took down. Hold on. Hold on. Now this piqued my interest. This is why you shouldn't like go crazy when you're five pips in profit. Hold on. It just, it irks me, man. Cause you know, I, I really wish some of these, some of these traders would, let's see. Like, I just hate the hype. I guess that's what it is, man. I hate the hype. No, oh, they deleted it. All right, whatever. They deleted it off of there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, dude, I, I'll tell you what. I'm looking for buys on GJ. I just don't think it's ready yet. I don't think it's ready yet. Um, the the I'll tell you right now, like when I look at it, the main issue I want, the, the main thing I want to see is I want to see evidence of buying, right? And <clears throat> I th correct me if I'm wrong. This was, this was Friday, right? Let's see, three, four, yeah, so this is Friday. So this is how we ended Friday. I mean, hmm. <clears throat> This just, this just doesn't give me a lot of confidence that buy orders were filled here. You know, like when we look at, look at CAD-J in the same area, right? You can see that uh, just on this 15 minute chart, look, look, at, look at the buy orders that are getting filled, right? When you look at GJ, it's just a mess. Like, it's, it's just a mess. All of this is a mess. So I don't, I don't think it's ready yet. Um, so one of, one of two things, this is, I mean, personally, this is how I would trade it. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll wait. I mean, you know, if we do come potentially down into this area here, 
and we have an accumulation, I'll give it a little bit of risk. Um, you can see I have an alert up here because if we, if we do end up breaking this high, then that's gonna be the ultimate confirmation for me that she's ready to go. And any pullbacks or any continuation plays, like any reaccumulations, I'll just play the reaccumulation. You know, that's that's ultimately how I'll I'll take it. But if if I had to choose between KJ and GJ, I mean KJ is definitely more favored on my watch list than this. <clears throat> you know, you read Wyckoff methodology and wanted to know if a ST breaks below the SC. Does the STB have to break below the ST or as long as it breaks below support, it's valid. Um, so I, I can give you my opinion. Um, you know, I mean, I would definitely suggest back testing, right? And, and looking at various schematics. But for me, I don't need, for me, I don't need my I don't need my ST to trade below the SC, right? For me, all the secondary test uh, all the secondary test for me is test the commitment of buyers. So I don't need us to trade below. Um, I don't need the STB to trade below the ST because the STB is just another secondary test. It just happens in phase B. Well, how do I know I'm in phase B? Because we get into phase C, which is my spring or my center strength. So yeah, like, like for me, the trading below the climax isn't a requirement for the secondary tests. All right. Um, but I would, I would definitely suggest, you know, take a couple of weeks, you know, every day, maybe find two or three pairs and just back test them. And, you know, I, you know, identify the schematic and look at it. <clears throat> How do you differentiate between a sign of strength and an up thrust? Uh, an up thrust happens in a distribution. A sign of strength happens in an accumulation. Unless, unless you're talking about um, a UA, an upthrust action. Is that what you're talking about? Upthrust action? All right. So yeah, yeah. Up, upthrust action. Ha so it's all about the phases. So a sign of strength will occur in phase C or phase D, right? Um, where an upthrust action will only occur in phase B. So once 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 you've exited phase B and you're in phase C, it's it's no longer an upthrust action. So and then just I mean, I'm not gonna. Again, this is just my opinion. Um, you know, there's a book definition of what a sign of strength is. In my opinion, signs of strength are very subjective, right? Um, how do I rationalize and validate a sign of strength? it comes back to cause and effect. So my sign of strength, in order for me to take action on a sign of strength, it has to invalidate supply. It has to break something. It has to do something, you know? Um, and if it doesn't, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to look to compound positions. I'm not going to look to, uh, to take action based off of that sign of strength with, uh, without it being the cause of something. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. All right. Um, okay. Moving on. Um, so we talked about GJ. Yeah. I, I, I'm looking for, I could tell you this, I'm looking for buys on GJ. I just don't think we're there yet. I just don't think we're there yet. I think, um, I'll move that down here. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's ready to go. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, 
for me, this would be like when I'm looking at it, this is how I'm seeing my schematic. So that's, that's where we're at right now. So that's why I said, do we have room for a spring? Because if we get a spring, then I'll need this to break, something like that. And if we don't get the spring, then what I would want to see is ultimately just complete break. I want us to take out all of this and then, you know, potentially something like that, you know? Yeah. Hold on, bear with me one sec. Let me just text somebody back real quick. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's kind of how I'm seeing it. All right. Um, I don't think, I don't think it's ready yet. I think we're, we're still in phase B on this. All right. Um, now GN, GN, um, same kind of thing. I mean, GN is pretty simple, much like GA, you know, um, you know what I, I do, I do know that we, you know, we broke this low here. And you could see market cycle. You could see the distro, the redistro. You could see the accumulation. Um, oh, well, that sucks. All right, no worries. Um, so, you know, obviously, I'm playing order flow here. All right, if we decide to come down into some lower time, into some structure points, then great. But we can see this is the, we're looking at this chart here. So you can see your distribution, you can see your creek, you can see your accumulation that confirms the reaccumulation. So when we get down into this price action is where I wanna really start to dive into something, all right? Um, which I think we'll get into. I think we'll get into there tomorrow. Um, you know, this, this is where I wanna see us come down into. You know, do do we necessarily need to come all the way down into this low? Not necessarily. You know, I mean, you can see, you could see where they distributed price. They came down. They swept the lows. You know, essentially one, two, three drive. Here's your spring, and you know, we're just we're looking for a mitigation. All right, and you could see price price doesn't even come close to mitigating this. So, you know, if we do come down. Um, you know, obviously my alert is sitting right here at this low. I'm going to be looking for right in here. You know, I mean, it's about a 40 pip range. I'll be looking for, again, an accumulation here to take this sucker up. Um, you know, and, and I'm, pretty, I'm pretty comfortable in saying that, you know, we'll, we'll get it either between London or New York session, we'll get it. Because we are, I think we're currently, what are we, like 100 and... Where are we right now? Oh, no, no. I think we're a little further than that. Darn it. Oh, yeah. We're about 100. Yeah, good. So we're only about 100 pips from it. So that's for GN. That's, that's pretty, pretty simple to get. Um, but yeah, this is, this is the key area I'm going to be looking at. All right. Um, I want to see us. I want to see us come into this accumulation right here. Uh, again, this accumulation is what this accumulation right here is what caused this high. All right. So we confirmed, we had the distro, we have the accumulation, we have our creek, right? And ultimately, we have our break. All right. So this for me is what's maintaining this order flow leg. So that's one I'm gonna play out of. All right. So I do like I do like GN from it. Um, that that area right there does give me some good confluence to look for a buy out of. So I'll continue uh, I'll continue to wait for it to come down into this leg. All right. Nothing I'm gonna put an order on um, just because it's GN and that I mean geez that like I said it's a forty just the area I'm looking for a buy out of is a forty pip range. All right. Um, so that's GN, uh, NU, much like AU, I'm just, I'm not, 
really interested in trying to do anything on it yet. Um, I want to see, I kind of want to see what we do. Um, you know, you can see redistribution out of this failed accumulation. Um, what I'm going to be looking for is one, what we do in the NFP candle and what we do out of here, right? Um, you know, if you, if you go back and just take a look at the distribution that occurs right here, you know, for me, this is, this is what I want to look at. So if we get up there, that's, that's an area I'm going to look at. Um, and if we don't get all the way up there, then the very first area I'm going to watch is what happened in this wick. This is the NFP wick. You can already kind of see like what's going on here. Um, we have a little bit of, you know, of a distribution starting. So potentially maybe we get, you know, something like that. And if we get that, I want to see the break, confirm this as a redistribution. All right. But, you know, it's AU and NU are kind of towards the bottom of my list. Um, I, if I'm going to trade a major, it's going to be, um, it's going to be pound or Euro, uh, or it's going to be US dollar Swiss franc. And I'll, I'll I'll talk about Swiss franc here in a second. Um, yeah, so that's NU and then here's Swiss franc. This is, this is ideally what I'm waiting on on Swiss franc. So, you know, really, really wanted price to come down into that accumulation. I had a limit order set off of that. I feel like I've been waiting for this forever. Um, you know, we did break the high. Uh, price did come in here and accumulate. All right. And for me, this is going to be more, again, a, of an order flow play. We're bullish on it. Price had this low. We had this high. Came in here to mitigate, right? And we made a new high. So now this is what's maintaining our order flow. And uh, I think, is this the one that I looked on the 15 second this morning? I think it is. So when you, when you come in here, you know, ideally anything in this leg right here is going to be fair game. Um, if you have the seconds time frame, I would definitely go down there and mark it out. You know, you can see it. This is the one minute view. You should see a super clean type one accumulation, but you should also see a super clean fractal, micro fractal, super duper lower time frame, micro, whatever you want to call it. Um, but there is your type one schematic, all right? So um, super clean, there's your trading range, here's your spring, right? Um, what I did was I just simply measured the entire push. 50% of my spring is right here. This would be, I think like a 1.7 pip stop to this low off the 50%. So, I personally have a, a small little order on that. Um, just in case we do get down there, it's, it's worth the risk. You know, again, it's a small order. Um, but I would, um, you know, I wouldn't hold my breath that we're going to get all the way down there. We could easily just come down, potentially come into 50%, which is right around where this slingshot reaccumulation is. We could see that accumulation here to go higher. All right, but um, I am like in I am like in U.S. dollar Swiss franc from here. Um, it's just going to be a matter of if we can get price uh, in a timely manner to get down here, because U.S. U.S. dollar Swiss franc moves like a freaking snail. Um, but this is this is where I'm looking. All right, we have overall we have this this is just a giant type two accumulation. Um, so if we do come back into it, I will. I will give it some attention out of here, all right? And again, you know, for me, this entire push, this entire push is where I'm looking. So anywhere in here is where I'm looking for a buy, all right? That's gonna be, that's gonna be my discounted pricing out of that, all right? Um, so that's US dollars Swiss franc. Um, and again, target wise, I mean, we're, we're bullish on this, right? So, I mean, ideally I'm looking for, I mean, I, if, if this thing could get down here, you know, I'm looking for that big, you know, whopping 200 pip move at minimum on us dollar Swiss franc. 
from a higher standpoint, I mean, just look at what we've been doing, you know, um, technically we're, this has all just been order flow because this is the high and you can just see accumulation, distro into your accumulation, reaccumulation, distro into your accumulation. So we just want to keep continuing this up, you know, nothing about this is telling me any kind of weakness, right? Nothing about this. All right. Um, so that's, that's us dollars just Frank. Uh, can you explain what you mean by imbalance? Is it a break of structure followed by a retest of the POI? No, uh, it's, it's a, uh, inefficient price action in the market. So, right. If, if you think about it, the, if for, to move the market, you need an equal amount of buys to an equal amount of cells. So when you have, when that becomes inefficient, when that becomes, there's a disparity between the buys and sells and price moves too quickly, it creates an inefficient price action order imbalance. All right. Um, and that, you know, for me, it's, it's not, I don't put as much emphasis as some other traders into imbalance. Uh, it's still important. But it's just another reason for the market to come back and evenly trade through that price action to mitigate it. So that's all imbalances. Have I thought of starting a Telegram chat room for what? Telegram chat room for what? I mean, I, we we've got the Discord. Um, yeah, man. My listen, I'm I'm not a young buck, so my life does not live on uh, on like social media or all these chat rooms, man. Like, I, I, I don't know, I, I probably belong to like 20 chat rooms and I, I, I can tell you, I probably spent all of maybe 10, 15 minutes on them every day. Um, yeah. Uh, UCAD, I, I, I'll tell you what, if you got a chart on UCAD, throw it. I've got nothing that I want to trade on UCAD right now. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, I, we'll take a look at it, but there's, there's nothing I want to do with UCAD at the, at, at the current point. Um, UJ. So UJ, nothing has changed on UJ. I mean, hold on. I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of crap on here. So on, on UJ, I mean, it's pretty simple for me. Um, I'm, I'm waiting here because this is my leg and I'm waiting to see what we do here. You can see my alert. That's, that's pretty much it on UJ. Um, I'm not interested in trying to sell this down. Um, if we can get down here, great. If this reaccumulates, then I'll play out of this accumulation here. I mean, that's that's it in a nutshell on UJ. Um, and you can you can kind of see like there's a lot of if we let's go down to like a one hour. So I was interested in looking last week. I was interested in looking here out of this accumulation because you you can see the market cycle. You know, this was a failed distro. This was your reaccumulation, but we ended up trading below it, and we never gave we never gave proper confirmations for the buy. So, you know, for me now, I mean, we've been we've been sideways for over a week and a half now. Um, you know, I'm I'm not. This isn't a buy area for me. This isn't a is not a sell area for me. My buy area is going to be right here, right, or lower. And, and that's what I'm going to wait on. So if we can get, if we can get into that price action, great. Um, if we don't, like I said, if we take the high, if we take this high, come on, there we go. If we take this high, then I'll, cons then I'll look at this accumulation because cause and effect, it does something. So yeah. Yep. All right. for same reason as the discord. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, yeah, I, I don't use telegram that much, man. Yeah. The discord's easier for me to, to keep track of and, and to manage a, a telegram. Yeah, no, no, I'm good, man. I'm good. Um, here. And then before we get to UCAD, we'll talk about, uh, we'll talk about oil, right? So for me, 
Um, I know, especially if you guys are in the US, you talk, you know, they're talking about how great it is that oil took a massive drop. Okay, that's great. You know, um, <laughs> yep, we distributed. Yes, we did. But all we did was come right back into the extreme of our leg and came right into 50% of the move. So I, I, wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that oil prices are going to be taking a dive anytime soon. Um, one of the things I'm looking at, you know, we do have, um, we do have an accumulation, right? And, you know, for me, this is my, this is my buy area. We can come back and mitigate out of that. You know, tomorrow's crude oil inventories, we could see a, we could see a sell-off from there. You know, ultimately we could see price do something like this, build some orders in here to take this higher. So that's, that's kind of my plan going forward with oil. I'm, I'm looking for buys, but I'm only going to be looking for buys out of this push right here. All right. Um, could we come, could we come into this? Absolutely. You know, I mean, you know, we, we, we technically can do that, but if I'm going to be putting money on the line for oil, it's, it's going to be coming out of this box right here. So if we can get down here, give me an accumulation, same thing. I want to ride it up. Um, and I'll be, I'll be taking this to all time highs or not all time highs, but I'll be taking it to intraday high. Um, without a doubt, I'll be taking it and take it this high, you know, look, look from the higher time frame. you know, where are we, where are we going on oil? We're, we're coming here, you know, so we've, we've broken this, you know, do I think we're ever going to come back down here? Not anytime soon, mm -mm. not anytime soon, you know, fundamentally there's, there's nothing that's going to get us to, uh, to do that, to come down at, not at this point, you know, I, I, I foresee, I foresee that now who knows, you know, every week we're coming out with the damn new variant. We're coming out with all kinds of stupid stuff. So who knows what it is? Um, you bought the last dip on both. Okay. All right. Sounds good, man. I, I don't, I don't own either of those. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, oh, hold on. Bear with me. I just lost. There we go. I lost my chat. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, oil, oil, I'm going to be looking for the buy. You know, nothing, nothing about oil is telling me bearishness. You know, nothing about it is telling me to short this stupid thing. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. Um, and I know, let's see, UCAD. So UCAD. Um, here, hold on. Let's see. So Pretty much the issue I'm having with UCAT is this. This is this is what's maintaining our intraday structure because we broke over here somewhere. This is what was maintaining our lower time frame structure, and we broke that. This is one ugly distribution, three drive distribution. Um, Do we get a, yeah, I mean, if you get a pullback, if you get a pullback into the distro, possibly a, a decent sell could come out of it. Or you could see potentially price coming into your potential buy area. Well, you've already broken order flow, and that's that's the thing. So for me, you've got 
Um, you've got intraday, intraday bullish, lower time frame bearish, order flow bearish, right? So this is why it's on my secondary list because where where's my buy area, right? Like when I look at it from an intraday perspective, where's my buy area? Well, my buy area currently right now, my buy area would be down here because this accumulation here has an invalidated supply. So I won't be, I won't be looking for long-term buys until we get out of this. Um, and from a lower time frame perspective, you know, we've invalidated order flow. I'd be waiting for price to come back here to at least short it. Um, all of this is order flow, but like I said, I only like to play order flow where where we are, you know, bullish, 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 or bearish, 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 and we're none of those on UCAD. So that's why she's sitting on my secondary because I'd rather trade CAD J. I'd rather trade. US dollar Swiss franc, I'd rather trade you a GU before this. You know, this just doesn't really give me a lot of um, it doesn't give me a lot of options, you know, and it doesn't give me a lot of options on something I really want to play out of. Uh, I could tell you that this drop is really it's it's really the Canadian dollar that's doing it. So uh, well, Canadian dollar asterisk oil because that's where you're getting the strength on the Canadian dollar. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, for me, there's just, there's no play. There's nothing I want to do with, with UCAD. You know, I'd rather just sit, let it sit on the sidelines there. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's everything I got on my list that I'm personally looking at. Um, oh, indices. Yeah, yeah, indices. So, I mean, I was, I was looking at, we were looking this morning. We were looking out of this right here. This is the distro I wanted us to take a, an entry out of. This is, do I have it marked out? Redistro? Yeah, yeah there you go. This is what I was looking at. So, it's a shame that um, it, it'll, it's only in here now. So if we're still here tomorrow morning, I will, I will look for, I'll look for the short. Um, you know, I, I'll be honest, NASDAQ isn't my favorite pair right now. I, I prefer US 30 and SPX, um, but you can just see the market cycle. You can see your distro, your redistro, your redistro. We've accumulated, we reaccumulated. So now the question is, are we going to, if we, I'll tell you right now, we trade above here and you know, we'll, we'll be making a new all time high. Um, so it's just a matter of waiting for a pullback. Um, you know, this is New York price action from this morning. It's left unmitigated. So if we do pop above it and get a pullback into today's New York price action, that'd be an area that I'd be looking for buys on. Um, uh, SPX, same thing, you know, essentially what I was looking for, um, I was looking to see this is the redistribution that causes this break right here. So this is my slingshot. So what we do here, if we get a distribution, this is where I want to see if we can short it. All right, man, have a good one, bro. Um, you know, we are, we are invalid. We are in a valid distro. I mean, you could see it. We broke this high one, two, three, four drives that led to the, to the low. So we are in a valid distribution. You know, this is, you know, if we trade above here, like I said, if we trade above here, I'm, I'm pretty confident at that point that we're going to make an all time high. So I want to see evidence of, of uh, sell orders coming into the market. Um, you know, we still have a, you know, we still have a good distance. What do we have like 10 points? Yeah, we still have like 10 points. So this, this could be something that, you know, you see typical Asian session, you know, start to go sideways, you know, we get that London pop break, you know, New York comes back to mitigate and, and we do something like that. So that's, that's what I'll be looking at. Just be very 
you know, you know, be very cognizant that we are higher time frame. We're just bullish, you know. So, um, what do you think of the news tomorrow? What news tomorrow for indices? There's there's nothing that's going to move tomorrow in indices. No, there's there's absolutely nothing tomorrow. Yeah, there's there's nothing that's going to move indices tomorrow. Right? Tomorrow's Wednesday. Yeah. Nothing that's going to move indices tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Higher time frame. Oh, absolutely. Higher time frames are bullish. Mad bullish. Yeah. And CAD news. Yeah, but CAD news isn't going to move the indices. Yeah. This is this is just your bank rate. I mean, the the rate's going to stay the same. It's whatever, it's whatever they say in the press conference. So which news moves indices? Um, oh, geez, you know, your CPI data is gonna move it. Um, earnings reports, you know, I don't know. I don't know who's, I, I, actually tomorrow's what? Tomorrow's Wednesday, there may be some earnings reports. There may be some earnings reports. Who's, who's let's see. Let's see. Let's see the S and P. Um, yeah, let's see. I don't think I don't think anybody's um, let's see let's see who's reporting on the Nasdaq. So tomorrow's the eighth. All right. Nobody big is is reporting. Uh, yeah, nobody big is reporting on that. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at this later. But yeah, earnings reports are going to move the market. Um, you know, any any actual economic data is going to is going to move it. But your your ten year bond auction isn't going to move it. Your crude oil inventories. I mean, you've got three, four. You got four uh, four oil companies in the SPX five hundred. You got one in the Dow Jones. Um, but they're not, they're not, just remember, they're not weighted evenly. So, yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, no worries. But yeah, so I'm, I'm looking for cells out of there. If, if we pop above it, then I'm, I'm done looking for the cells. You know, the cells are, are very short lived. Um, and then same thing for US 30. You know, like I was looking out of this redistribution and we're, we're in that neighborhood. So tomorrow morning, if I wake up and I see a really nice distro here, I'm going to sell it. Um, just keep in mind, just keep in mind this. So we don't have anything confirmed yet because we don't have any signs of weakness, but I've got my eye on this. I've been, I've been watching this for a very long time. So, you know, if this is in fact what breaks this, Hold on to your pants because I I see a easily ten thousand point drop into here. Yeah. If one pops above the high and the other two don't, then you have divergence. Yeah, you have divergence. So I would be, you know, I guess. Uh, well, I don't care about if the Nasdaq does it, but if S if the way I trade, if um, <clears throat> if SPX or US 30 trades above it, then I'm not going to look for the cells. So, yeah. <clears throat> do you only wait for schematics at slingshot candles? I do. Yes. Uh, well, it, it all depends. Not, I, I won't say I always, you know, there's sometimes I'll throw a limit order on. Do I place limits and also wait for a schematic at, uh, yep. I'll always have a limit order on the extremes. And depending on what the R to R is, I'll 
wait for a schematic. The, the reason I'll put a limit order and not wait for the schematic is in case I'm not on the charts when price comes into that price point. So when in doubt, I'll always try to secure an entry through a schematic because it's gonna give me one, the more highly probable entry. Uh, two, it's gonna give me the better R to R. Um, and three, it's gonna keep me out of a dumb trade, right? Because if I follow my confirmations to get in through a schematic, um, the the likely or the winning percentage or the the ability for me to at least protect myself either through a reduced risk through a break even or through taking partials is greatly enhanced by playing the schematic confirmations than if I were just to take a limit order yeah um, do I count wicks as a break of structure yes I count wicks yep doesn't matter that the number what's so i guess the question is what's the difference between the one hour and the four hour four different candles yeah but what's the difference let me ask you a question if Let's just say this. Let's say, let's say that you have, this is the four hour, right? So let's say that you have, well, shoot, we'll do it like this. Say this black line is your stop loss and price wicks up above it but doesn't close above it are you still in the trade no so it's a break of structure right it's broken this high you know i mean that's how i look at it i don't look at structure to me is not highs and lows structure to me is orders i mean that's that's how i look at it this this here is This here is a, where the heck is it? There it is. This here is not a four hour high or a one hour high or whatever anybody else. I mean, to each his own. Like, I'm not going to say that anybody else is wrong. I'm just selling the way I look at it. This here represents one thing and one thing only, supply. This is an attempted accumulation that redistributes out of supply, this, is be this being your last point of supply. If price trades above this black line, supply is no longer in the market. It's a break of structure for me. So that's how I look at it. I mean, that's how I looked at it for a very long time. And I'm pretty, I'm pretty good at, you know, I guess trading the way I see it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I know there's a thousand people will tell you different things, you know, the the only answer that you can definitively definitively have is you know well shoot just do what exactly what i did you know i wanted to figure out well what what is this mystical thing about wicks do they consider or they consider breaks of structure do they you know do they need to take a high do they need to take a low and all that stuff um you know for me i back tested i don't know a couple thousand charts and I got my answer. So, you know, I, I mean, I know what I'm looking for. I know how I'm looking at it, but yeah, for, for me, it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, GU, GU, this is a break of structure. This is what allows me, this is what allows me to take a trade out of here or out of here is the fact that we traded below this wick. How much did we trade below that wick by? By that much right there. That's how much we traded below that wick buy. That's a break of structure for me. That's one order that traded below over here. So when I look at my volume profile, let 
when I look at my volume profile, there are sell orders that took out that low. So that's all I care about. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to take that trade. You know, same thing. I mean, there's a bunch of them like that where, you know, that, that little break is all I need to, to give me the confirmation to take the trade. So same thing like in an accumulation. Um, she, what was the last accumulation we took? Uh, yeah. Uh, how do you see those orders? Just go to your volume profile. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so let's say the wick breaks above the last LPSY. You look for buys. Um, I don't know. Are you in a bearish market or a bullish market? If you're in a bullish market, yeah, look for the buys. If you're in a bearish market, just because it val invalidates your last point of supply, does that mean you're automatically bullish? Yeah, I guess it would it would be dependent upon where you are and what structure you are in. And yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I only need, and I, I know a bunch of you guys, um, trying to think of the last one where it was like a, a really small break. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't need, I don't need a, a significant, I, I just need an order to break that structure point, you know, and that's all I would, I would require. Um, on IM, they preach that it has to be body. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, good for them. Yeah. I would just say back test it, you know, because then I guess the question is what, what body, what body closure, the 15 minute, the daily, the four hour, the one hour, the five minute, the five second, which, what body closure is it? So just see and say, is the accumulation schematic in ADA USD done? Is that the valid spring um, on the 45 minute time frame? If price breaks the, the last point of supply in a bearish market, that doesn't count as a BOS? Well, no, because your last point of supply is in a structure point, right? Right? Your LPSY wouldn't be a structure point. Your LPSY will never be a structure point, right? It's an order flow point. That's the difference between order flow and structure. So if it breaks, if it breaks the distribution that is holding bearish structure, now you're in a bullish market if you have broken that bearish uh, structure point. So then you can look for buys, right? But if you're just, if you're just looking, if, if just the LPSY gets invalidated, Listen, order flow gets invalidated all the time, right? Um, 45 minute on ADA is the accumulation complete. What accumulation are you talking about, bro? What, what, where's the valid spring? Is the accumulation schematic in ADA USD done? Valid spring in the 45 minute. You're talking about like this price action over here? No, bro, that's not an accumulation. Yeah, that's not an accumulation. That's a, this is a redistribution, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that's at a, that's an accumulation yet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if we are in a bearish market, it breaks the LPSY. It's a, yeah, it's a break of order flow, not a BOS. So I would still look for sells unless it breaks. Well, yeah, if you're in a bearish market, you're going to look for sells, right? You're going to look for sells until you're no longer in a bearish market. Right. You know, like, um, I don't know, let me give you an example, like, uh, like GU, right? So GU, you know, at, at what point, at what point will I give up 
on looking for cells. You know, I mean, well, just look at it. I mean, this is my this is my lower time frame leg. Just because we break this high doesn't mean I'm gonna be looking for buys, right? Because what if we what if we just do this and come here and then distribute? Right. I'm this is my line in the sand, right? My line in the sand is going to be this. So we're in a bearish market just because just because we break an LPSY, right, doesn't automatically mean that all, you know, we're going to be bullish. You know, look at, here's a great example. Look, look at this redistribution here. Last point of supply right here. We broke it. And then what do we do? We came in, distributed, broke. Slingshot, distro that's maintaining structure. And what do we do? We invalidate the slingshot, we distribute out of our supply point, make a new low. You know, this is why, like for me, I, I don't play order flow unless order flow is in, uh, in confluence with market structure and market cycle. So show us an example of a bearish market. You're looking at it right here, man. GU, it's a bearish market. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, BTC and Ethereum. Yep, there it was the first thing we looked at. Yep, yeah, B, I mean, BTC did exactly what I said it was going to do last week and the week before come right down into 42,000. So we saw, we saw, I mean, it was, it was perfect. Yep, it was perfect. So, yeah, Ethereum didn't come low enough. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm a little bummed with Ethereum. Ethereum did not come low enough, but it, it makes sense why Ethereum didn't come low enough. So I was looking, I was actually looking in here. So look at this, man. I, I, I mean, especially for those of you guys that are, are heavily invested in crypto like me, like you could just look at some of these articles and people are like, oh my God, the drop the drop and and that's it was it was designed just to do that and look what we've done i mean we've moved we've recouped 30 percent of that drop already um yeah i mean this 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 was a shame it didn't come lower I, I really wanted it to come in here um but it is what it is you know um what was the cause of the drop um who knows i mean I, i'll tell you honestly by looking at it um, I would probably say it was a mixture of uh, short squeezes and profit taken. So if you guys remember, like I talked about it last week, right? Why did I think the drop was going to happen? Because we're in December. And what do most people have to do by the end of the year? They got to pay their tax bill, right? So if they're going to, if they're going to, finalize their taxes they're going to take their profits now so that they don't have to hold them over into the following year uh, especially in the us they're really talking about a hammering down on crypto on taxes for crypto so if you're going to take profits take them now right that's the idea take them now that way you don't get hit with the uh with like a luxury tax or with a capital gains tax something like that um and a lot of people that are traders like me right I'll give you an example. Me, 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 I'm a full-time trader. This is all I do. So when I have to pay taxes, how do I pay taxes, right? I got I to gotta pull money out of my investment. So how do I do that? I got to sell a position. I have to close out a stock. I have to sell a coin, right? And that's what some of these guys have to do. Uh, other, um, you know, like if you are invested in ETFs, right? Or if you're in a mutual fund or, you know, if you are you know, in a hedge fund and you have invested your money with a, with a fund or with an organization, you, you want returns. When do you get your dividends check or your returns typically at the end of the year? So what are these, what do these firms do? Well, they will, if they're in massive profits, they're going to part, they're going to take partials. They're going to profit take so that they can pay out their investors. When do they do that? At the end of the year, you know? So that's, that's why, 
you know, I mean, it happened like clockwork. I mean, if you, if you guys remember that chart, um, I mean, well, it's, it's the same damn chart, you know what I mean? And nothing, nothing's different, but I dropped it in the crypto chat on the Aporia group. I mean, that's, that's what it was. It was right here. I, I had said, we're, we're going to see a 42,000, you know, BTC, and we may even see a 30,000, you know? Um, I, I don't know if we're going to see it though. I mean, I think just by the reaccumulation we're seeing here, this is going to be the, the telltale sign. If we can break above here, if we can break above here, that's it. We're, we're golden. Now, if we come into this distribution and we see evidence of distribution to come lower, then you know we're coming here. So, but I'm okay with it. You know, let it come down. You know, I mean, if, if, if it's any, if it's any indication, right, we saw a, we saw a, what is it, 35,000, we saw a 35,000 uh, point drop, right, and then we saw a, And then we saw a $40,000 pump. So you figure we're going to probably, what do we see here? We saw a $27,000 drop. So if we get a $30,000 pump, you know, you're looking maybe like mid 75,000. So, yeah, you know, I, I like, I like the move, you know, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. I'm not, I'm not liquidating my, my crypto. So uh oh absolutely i mean for for people that know what they're doing absolutely i know everybody on this call will probably be you know what, what was it you guys it, those of you guys on the zoom call that time that where we or when we draw where were we on a zoom call or were we just in chats when uh in may when when crypto sold off 30 percent and i mean i remember i remember i couldn't get into buys because the exchanges were completely overrun with people trying to buy crypto, you know, and, you know, I remember I maxed out my, um, uh, my holdings, you know, cause I was, I was trying to fund it with, you know, my bank account, trying to fund it with, you know, uh, with, tra uh, with wire transfers and yeah, it, it sucked. It sucked. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you, I'll tell you right now, the average person, you know, the average person might, the Uber driver the other day that took me, you know, on a, on a Uber ride, that told me that I should buy Bitcoin when it was like 58,000, you know, that guy, that guy's selling his investments. That guy is, is, is saying death to crypto, you know? So, um, yeah. What is a slingshot area again? And how does it function? Google slingshot, right? You put a rock or a marble in it. That's, that's how it functions. It just, it's the cause of the new higher, the new low. Yeah. <clears throat> so GU is bearish market until it breaks the distro up at 142. Uh, until it breaks, yeah, 142, 500. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Until it breaks that intraday structure. Yep. Um. And would you look for buys in the point of origin that made the new high? Yeah. Yep. And then I would just wait for the pullback, you know? So, I mean, kind of like this, right? Like Chef JPY. <clears throat> Chef JPY made a new high, right? Made a new high. So where do I look for buys? I'm not looking for buys here. Here's the accumulation. Here's the reaccumulation. Here's my slingshot. The cause of the lower time frame break the cause of the intraday break. So these are my buy areas. Yeah. Um, what's your view on Riot blockchain? Uh, I don't have any. I mean, for me right now, it's not, not something that I'm investing in. Yeah. AU? AU, nothing. AU needs to do some stuff before I do anything. Have you got rid of all your Shiva? Um, I think I'm holding like 10% of it. Yeah. I'm just holding like 10%. I'm, I'm not buying, I'm not investing any more in it though. For me, the, the pump was done. I mean, it's a, it's a meme coin. So 
what's it what's it done oh yeah look at that <laughs> all these people man trying to get trying to buy i i know a bunch of people that bought like ten thousand dollars worth here and i just i told them why you know they didn't want to buy it when i told them buy it down here um yeah i'm, I'm not i'm not interested in trying to buy any any more of it it's going to do exactly what dogecoin did you know anybody that got into dogecoin after the uh Anybody that got into Dogecoin after the big, just look at this. Here's, here's your pump, just like on Shiba. Here's your reaccumulation. And everybody that got in after I'd say here has been just in drawdown. So there's, there's no, yeah, you're not going to see another pump up. You know, that was it. Yep. Um, can you identify any accumulation on Bitcoin at the moment? What do you mean any accumulation on Bitcoin at the moment? For what? Yeah, here's your accumulation right here. Now. Yeah. All right. Um, XLM, what about XLM? I mean, I'm bullish on XLM. I haven't, I haven't looked at it in a while. There you go. Actually, you know what? I think I did get into it. I think my order, I had an order at 26 cents. So I'm in the order on 26 cents. Actually, I'm in the order. Yeah, I'm in. Technically, we could still come back into like 15. We can, this is, I, I still have orders down here around like 15, 14 cents. Yeah. I'm still bullish on it. I mean, we haven't until until we viol until we break below here. I'm not. I'm not really giving up on it. I I I do like Stellar though. I mean, it's it's got it's got a you know for me it's got a lot of good use. Um, and I mean, yeah. I mean, you're talking about almost a 500 percent increase if we get up to all time highs. So awesome. Yeah, man. Have a good one, bro. Um, yeah. But anyway, that's. That's pretty much everything I got, guys. Um, you know, if you guys have any other questions, hit me up in the chat. I'll try to get to them as quick as I can. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much this is everything I'm watching for the for the week. Like I said, um, you know, keep in mind we have a light news calendar. Not going to have a lot of volatility this week, so just don't force anything, man. Uh, one thing I, you know. I think a lot of people are really starting to get the the handle on market cycle, market structure, schematics. Just don't just don't force it. You know, um, I think too many times people force trades, and I think that's what really gets them hurt. But uh, yeah, man, awesome. You guys have a good one. Enjoy. I'll catch everybody later.